Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, let's go ahead and um, do some adjustments on the volume. Like I said, I can't tell the music level, but I got to remember in my ear, it's louder because it's not adjusted in my ear. It's adjusted when the video does populate. I tried to explain to all of you that every time I've tried to put videos concerning this on the internet, something went wrong. Either the video didn't populate correctly or, and I, hours of talking and I couldn't put the video up because it never recorded properly. So we did a seminar in New York to show you how horrible it has been trying to get this information out to you. When I put this information before the group in New York at the micro seminar, we had three different units recording. And every single time it did not record correctly. For instance, you saw the video we put up, the Exiting the Matrix part three, and you saw there was no sound, but we were talking about Social Security. <laughs> or we were talking about the banking accounts. Ladies and gentlemen, Again, individuals have been talking about the Federal Reserve account. So this video will be called an alternative to using the Federal Reserve account. Now, I want you to pay attention. Look at your Social Security card. It says this number has been reserved for this person, and it puts your name, correct? The card may be the property of the Social Security Administration, but that's your account number with Social Security Administration. Now, we've already showed you that Social Security is a bank. I just did a video showing you about Social Security as a bank, so do yourself a favor. Look up Social Security routing number, but we're going to talk about that in a minute. Notice what this thing says, Social Security Credit Union. Excuse me? Social Security Credit Union? Interesting. Now, now let's go here. We're going to look at the routing number. Routing numbers for Social Security Credit Union is a 9 digit bank code used for various bank transactions such as direct deposit, electronic payment, wire transfer, check ordering, and many more. Routing numbers are also known as bank routing numbers, routing transit numbers, ABA numbers, ACH routing numbers. Routing numbers may differ depending on where your account is initially open and the type of transactions made. Again, you have to find the account number for your account with Social Security Administration. Find Social Security routing numbers on a check. The best way to find a routing number for your Social Security checking, savings, or bank or business account is to look to the lower left corner of the check. See, routing number right here. This is the routing number symbol. This is the account number symbol, okay? And as you notice, let's. this is a sample money order. It needs the name of the party it's coming from. It needs the name. Uh-oh, I didn't mean to do that, ladies and gentlemen. I do apologize. I'm sorry. Okay, it needs the name of the party it's going to. It needs to have a date. It needs to have a serial number. Oh, serial, lucky charms. <laughs> oh, God needs to have what's called a courtesy box. This is called a courtesy box. It needs to have a courtesy line for writing the amount of the item. And again, you don't need, this is for checks. Checks usually tend to have the name of the bank, okay? You don't need that. You don't need a memo line. These two things are not necessary, but you do need to have a signature line. Now, is the routing number and all of that stuff necessary? Only when you're doing it as a money order. If you're doing it as a bill of exchange, then no, you do not need that. If you're doing it as a promissory note, then you don't need that. Notice this, I want you to pay attention. Here's what you need to know. The routing number for the Social Security Administration, that lets you know these are two different things. Find routing numbers for Social Security in the table below below table. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is the routing number for the Social Security Administration. This is the routing number for the Social Security Credit Union located in Alabama. Okay. 
Now it says addresses mentioned in the table may differ from the branch office address. Routing numbers of a bank usually differs from only by state and is generally the same for all branches in the state. Okay, and then they had a discussion, but you notice is this belongs to me? Can I use this? Very good question from this young man. Okay. Angus, very good question. He asked six months ago and nobody replied. Ladies and gentlemen, this information has been up here all this time. And as I said, every time I've tried to put it out to get this information to you, something has gone wrong. Just like even now, my screen is slowing and I don't really have much going on in the background. But this is to give you guys an understanding of what your rights are, what you have access to, what you have that belongs to you. You see, they keep saying you don't have the authorization, you don't have the authority. That is not true. You have an account. You have a private and personal checking account with a financial institution, a bank. Nobody knows what your policy is. Nobody knows what your contract with that bank is. There's nobody that can tell you you are not authorized to use that account because they have no idea what your contract is. Do you ever see anybody telling you that you can't use your Bank of America account? No. So then how can they tell you you can't use your Social Security account? People, you use it all the time. They're always asking you for your account number. Do they not ask you for your Social Security number in every financial transaction you do? So let's get it, people. Let's get the understanding. And you see, this says routing number. Let's go to Social Security Credit Union. I'm actually interested in that. I think you all should be interested in it, too. Look, a lot of research gets started when I do videos like this. Because, go ahead. Do your search on YouTube and see if anybody's talking about it, especially along these lines. Now, pay attention. Birmingham, Alabama, okay? And there's only one branch found. Now, why is it that there's only one Social Security Credit Union? Interesting, ain't it? So, it does give us, got to wait for the screen to refresh. And we don't care about the Naval Credit Union. We don't care about security service. No, we're only focusing on Social Security right now because remember, the Social Security Act was set up for you. That was the government saying, we will take care of your needs. Again, ladies and gentlemen, please get it. You were never supposed to be dealing with fiat currency. You're never supposed to be dealing with legal tender. You were never supposed to be dealing with legal tender. Okay, now is this associated with the Social Security Administration? Of course it is, because if you notice, when you look it up, it comes up right under the Social Security Administration. Let's do this so that you can see that this number, they will sit up there. Oh, by the way, sometimes you will need a SWIFT code, but most of you guys do not know what a SWIFT code is. Do your research on that. You won't need it all the time. You Only in certain transactions will you need a SWIFT code. So, look, and sometimes SWIFT codes, although these are quite different from routing numbers, as SWIFT codes are solely used for international wire transfers, while routing numbers are used for domestic transfers, routing numbers differ from checking and savings accounts, prepaid cards, IRAs, lines of credits, and wire transfers. Usually, all banks have different routing numbers for each state in the U.S. You can find the routing number to the for Social Security in Alabama here okay ladies and gentlemen I just gave you a lot of information most of you are trying to do the our style money order well I'm gonna give you a heads up I'm gonna tell you guys something that I wasn't gonna tell anybody why not start doing international money orders using the SWIFT code for the Treasury using the SWIFT code for the Social Security Administration Stay away from the Federal Reserve because you don't have the right to use that account. Okay, let me say that again. Why not use the SWIFT code 
for the Social Security Administration. You can pull up the SWIFT code here or at the other site with the banking routing numbers. But let me show you something about the credit union to let you know that this credit union is part of the Social Security Administration. Watch this. Let's go down. Find routing numbers for Social Security in the table below. Okay, remember, you cannot use the name of a government entity when setting up your corporation. They will not allow it. Just like you cannot be called the United States of Birmingham. You cannot be called the United States of America at Washington, D.C. You cannot be called Washington, D.C.'s federal corporate entity. You cannot use the government's name in your name. If you don't believe me, just go ahead and look at, uh, what is it? DC code 22-3401 through 3403. DC code 22-3401 through 3403. You cannot do it. Okay. So they wouldn't be able to do this. But I'm not worried about the credit union right now. I would suggest you guys do your research on a credit union. I just showed you where their main branch is and so forth. Well, and who the, where the corporate office is and it appears there's only one. Now ask yourself the question, why is there only one? Okay, let's do the SWIFT code because I'm interested. If it will let me, it don't seem like it wants to, oh, that's right, it was, I got to wait for it to get to where it's got to get. See, here's the phone number. Here's the address. Reverend Abraham Woods Jr. Boulevard. Look at that. A reverend getting a street named after himself. I thought reverends are supposed to represent God. So why would anybody give that reverend any credit? Not supposed to take credit. Credit is supposed to go to the one they represent, isn't it? So what the... I'm sorry. SWIFT codes, also called BIC codes, are used for international wire transfers. So why not do international um, money orders? Okay. Again, why not do that, people? You can get the SWIFT code for Social Security Administration. Just do the Google search. You can get the SWIFT code for any bank. Just do the Google search. I did it the other day. There, there, There's also another code, BIC code. So let's do that. BIC code for Social Security. So give me a second. Dang it. I'm, I was looking for it to see. Let's do... Okay. We're going to do this. <clears throat> We're going to do the BIC code. And see, I was supposed to put BIC code, but I put BIC. So... Beneficiary identification, uh, <laughs> identification code. So I didn't have to do it. I was getting ready to type it in, but I didn't have to do it. What is the BIC code for Social Security? Now, isn't that interesting? Ladies and gentlemen, again, I constantly show you, this is how I do my research. Okay? If I already signed up for Business Services Online user ID to verify Social Security numbers and complete annual wage reports, do I need blah, blah, blah? Uh-oh. These codes are not assigned to a claim number until the claimant applies for Social Security benefits. Uh, Social Security numbers primarily claimant applied. No. BIC source code. Wait. Their BIC is A, and their claim number is interesting. Beneficiary identification code. 
sorry, that comes on from time to time. And I had it on standby, so it heard me say something. What is the BIC code for Social Security? I need the... Yeah, it... Okay. Beneficiary Identification Code, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I'm thinking? Notice this. It says BIC is A. And they apply for retirement benefits. Their BIC is A. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we do need to add the BIC code. Now, I can't tell you that. You're going to have to do the research. Because, again, you see, I'm just looking this up now. I haven't looked it up before. See, the Medicare number is whose Social Security record entitles benefits of Medicare benefit, wage earners, so on and so forth. Beneficiary code table text. Table Social Security Administration, B, wage 62, let's do this. I told all of you, I said, hey guys, you need to, look at that, HUD, Social Security number codes, HUD.gov. So tell me I'm not on to something, people. This is how I do research. This is how I stumble onto things. Something says, take a look at this. Nobody has pointed me in this direction. And I promise you, Go ahead and take a look and see if anybody's been talking about this. Well, such and such, such and such was talking about this. Okay. Look at that. A is the primary claimant. Okay. Look at this. We got young wife, divorce, young, aged wife, aged husband, aged widower, married widower, father, widower. But I'm looking for, and I don't see one that says age of majority. But I know that there has to be a code that they put on your paperwork for age of majority. They have a code of everything else. They have a code for everything else. Okay? And I would go through these codes and I would put these codes on your 445 forms with reference to yourself when you give the authorization because you it's okay to do the 445 but do an authorization letter with the 445 please understand this pay attention to this your authorization letter only needs to be a paragraph long it doesn't need to put any case law or anything it just needs to state that you're authorizing that payment okay that's all it has to say some of you God, and I want to say bless your little hearts, but your little hearts don't need to be blessed because some of you are a piece of work. I just, that's all I can say is some of you really, really, really are a piece of work. You you go over and aboard and beyond. You, you, God, some of you just, you're, you're adding way too much. And I had to realize the type of, people I'm not talking about all of you pay attention to the words some of you I had to realize the type of people I was dealing with when I went back to some of my old emails and I took a look at some of the names people were choosing for their emails and I'm like oh god what is wrong with these people okay just that simple because some of the people they're interesting to say the least Okay, some of the people are extremely interesting in how they view things and how they see things. People, there's this, this, this trend for people saying that the universe is willing this and the universe is willing that. The universe doesn't have a will. The universe is simply a machine, a mechanism, a perpetual motion machine put in place to serve a particular purpose. Just that simple. The universe does not have a will. It's the will of the universe. When did people start talking about this stuff? Oh, that's right. Astronomy and astrology. That's when people started talking about this. So this has been going on for centuries, decades, millennia. 
if you think that you can wish or will yourself into prosperity, then you're wrong. I can prove to you that you're wrong because you've been trying to do it all this time and it hasn't worked. That's how I can prove it. Because you've been trying to do it all of this time and it has not worked. So stop it. Stop making up excuses and saying, well, I guess it was not the will of the universe. The spirit, the great spirit. Anyway, let's get back to this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to suggest that you all do the research. Like I said, I would love to do the research, but I just don't have the time to do so. We got social security number codes. And it's a PDF, gentlemen, ladies. This is how I do research, because something got my attention. And originally, I knew about the SWIFT codes. That's why I told you that I was going to go into detail, but I didn't have to, because it explained it. And I said, sometimes you will need to use the SWIFT code. And I said to you people, why not do the international money orders from now on? Not just our style money orders, international money orders. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a document that I've been passing around to quite a few people. It's the document on Tinder. Love me tender, love me sweet. Okay. Well, that's pretty fast, y'all, for tethering, because it wasn't going that fast a moment ago. So keep going. All right. Let's show you tender. Yeah, I have another document up here. I have a bunch of other people's stuff. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, we can't do that one. 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 You know what? I need the document on Tinder, so let's go to the document on Tinder. Tinder payment. Ladies and gentlemen, I did a video before, and I said, please, the highlights in this one are highlights that I've added. But just go and type in this document. The Ohio State University Knowledge Bank. You don't have to type that in. Just type in tender of payment under UCC Section 3-604. Okay? Sorry. My touch screen is working, but my touch screen isn't working because I got the screen enlarged. So, And I have it on select text. I should have it on hand tool. See? Hand tool. Anyway, tender of payment under UCC Section 3 that's 604, A Forgotten Defense, by Goldsmith Jeffrey M. Please, ladies and gentlemen, download this document. This is still the law. As I said in a previous video, this is by a law professor. You don't get to just publish a law journal. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the incident that happened with me in a hospital when my temperature got to be 126 plus degrees and I stayed above that for several weeks. Um, that made the New England Medical Journal. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't make the New England Medical Journal just because you sneeze. Okay? It takes a whole lot to get published in the New England Med Medical Journal. And I made the New England Medical Journal without trying. Okay? Am I patting myself on the back? No. What I'm saying is that I understand how to get into a journal, whether it be a medical journal or a law journal. It's not easy to have your work published. And you guys have often seen the movies where a doctor or somebody says that they got published. This is not publishing a book. This is not that type of publication. This is an academic publication. That's right, I said the word academic publication. That lets you know I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. It ain't easy. So this university puts its entire reputation on the line by publishing an instrument like this, a document like this. So that means that this professor knew what he was talking about. He probably even had his law students do reports on this, do the research for him as he put together the paper. So what I'm saying is that the information has been validated and verified. He actually includes tons of case law. Every page has case law at the bottom. 
every single page. Case law. Case law. There's even some pages that has more than enough case law, and we're just now getting to those because he gets more and more in depth into the information that he's providing. Okay? So this is me telling you, if you want to understand how to pay your bills, if you want to understand tender, if you want to understand tender, this is all about tender. Look, at any time before the return date of the writ, the defendant may tender to the attorney who brought the action, the amount of the debt and cost, and such tender shall be a bar to any further proceedings in this case. Ladies and gentlemen, your tender does not have to be backed by funds in an account. It just has to be tender. Learn what tender is so that you can understand how to pay your bills. Okay? Learn what tender is so you can pay your bills. Stop trying all of these stupid things that everybody else is putting videos out there. If you really want to change the system, learn what tender is. Go over these case laws. Yes, this document was written in 1978, but it hasn't changed because the Uniform Commercial Code hasn't changed, people. It's not a document. Commercial law won't change because it's fixed. Congress regulates commerce. Commercial law won't change. The fundamental principles of commercial law is tender a payment. That's why the professor did this document. Fundamental principles of commercial law. So understand those fundamental principles. People are talking about whether or not you have the authorization. You don't have the authorization to do jack as a minor, but you do have the authorization to do whatever you choose with your account because it is your account okay well ladies and gentlemen gentlemen and ladies thank you for letting me bring this to your attention i hope you have a good life a good night a good day and i'm hoping that this information will prove beneficial to more than some of you because aren't we in this together so again email address is eon e-e-o-n v the letter v as in victor the number three at gmail.com. That's eonv3 at gmail.com. Why is he giving that email address? Because those of you who figure things out, who come up with other sites that highlight exactly what I'm saying, especially about the BIC code and putting this on our instruments to further authenticate the document. Watch this. Like I said, I won't be doing this for too much longer. I don't have the energy for it, and it's been consuming my life. I need to go on with my life, okay? The reason why you see the on YouTube channel is because, you see, see, Eon V3, even the phone number, this is the phone number. This is the Google Voice. I don't hide that number from any of you. Doesn't mean that you get to call me 24 hours a day. Because you'll be out of your m mind if you think that's the case. Okay? That's the phone number. That's the email address. You don't get to call me explaining this because I don't have the time to talk to all of you. So don't get to, you don't get to do that. You can call. You can leave a text message at 631-533-6683. Ladies and gentlemen, 6315-EON-V3. That's what this spells. Uh-oh, no, this is wrong. Uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh. Whew, 6683. Got it. I'm glad I corrected that. Not 6688. <laughs> I think I, I don't think I went back and changed that. So whoever has the number 6688, been getting a lot of calls because I forgot about this, but no, no. 6315-EE-33-ON-66-V-8-3. 
okay? That's what this number spells. And so I apologize to y'all for leaving that up there. I thought I changed all of it, but apparently I did not. Oh, that's because they took that site down. That's the one Google took down. Eventually, I'll be bringing forth the... Um... Yeah, see, there it is right there. Here's the corrected one, okay? 5336683. So I did correct it. It's just these people put these videos up before I corrected it. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, and that's just me putting in the email address. Okay, so what I'm going to say to all of you is I'm done. This video is done. And we're going to have all of you have a coconut smile. And we'll speak to you the next time. Same bat channel. Same bat place. Same bat time. Nah, I don't think so. All right, ladies and gentlemen, have a good day.